Welcome to the Emily the Mystic Show. You're about to walk through a portal that leads to all things mystical, magical, spiritual, and supernatural. I'm your host, Emily. I'm a spiritual mentor and Akashic Records practitioner and teacher, an intuition development coach, and a galactic channeler. If you're an old soul on a self-discovery and healing journey, you are in the right place. We'll be diving in deep to some of my favorite mystical topics, including manifestation, past lives, the spirit world, energy, and so much more. Get ready to embrace your inner mystic and live your most authentic life possible. The portal is now open. Hello, everyone. I cannot wait to introduce you today to one of my dear friends who is just so incredible in so many ways and has so many things that she brings to the table. So we're going to get right into it here in a moment. So welcome to the show, Raven. Raven Brinson is a voice actor and entertainment media host with more than a decade of professional experience in the radio, TV, and digital commercial industries. She's hosted live and nationally syndicated radio shows on iHeartRadio and Odyssey, voiced commercials for international brands such as Volkswagen USA and WeWork, and interviewed some of your favorite musical artists like Coldplay, Nelly, Megan Trainer, Sabrina Carpenter, Charlie Puth, and more. Raven is also the creator, executive producer, and host of Astro Candy, a weekly podcast that supports self-exploration and discovery through spiritual and mystical topics like astrology, holistic healing and wellness, manifestation, mindfulness and meditation, human design, chakra balancing, and more. Raven's mission is to lead thought-provoking conversations with guests and experts in the hopes of encouraging listeners on their journey of self-discovery. Hello, Raven. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. (laughs) I'm not sure what's more disorienting, like hearing (laughs) someone read about you or knowing that you wrote your bio. (laughs) You're like, man, I am having some imposter syndrome, even though I wrote those words you have to kind of put yourself in a, in a like, Oh, I'm like, here's what I've done. Here's what I've accomplished. Like this, you're embodying this aura of, I don't know, like high self-worth and then hearing it back. You're like, Oh my God, I'm afraid of me. (laughs) It's very strategic on my part because I love that it puts all of my guests in this position of being open to receive, you know, hearing your own words and like hearing that being reflected back to you and just being able to receive you know, your own power and where you've gotten to in life. So I love it. I've power received. I should embody her more. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. (laughs) And for the audience to know, Raven is a dear friend of mine who I met here in Philadelphia. And then she followed her dreams and manifested an incredible future vision for herself by moving to LA. So Mm -hmm. Raven is joining us today from Los Angeles. So I can't wait to get into a conversation about how she manifested such a big move, how she's manifested so many cool things in her life. And yeah, we're going to, we're going to dive into it. Yes. I'm so excited. Let's do it. So let's get started by talking about who you are. So I would love to know what your astrology, sun, moon, and rising signs are. Yes, of course. So sun and moon, Aquarius. Rising sign is Aries. I have a stellium in Aquarius and Capricorn. As you know, Capricorn and Aquarius, both ruled by Saturn. So a lot of lessons, a lot of karma in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. But as far as my big three goes, I do think I'm pretty stereotypical as far as the Aquarius in me goes, especially with Aquarius moon. I'm kind of aloof. I don't like to feel my feelings. I like to intellectualize them. I do think I'm a big vision, thinker, dreamer, always thinking about the future. Sometimes I have to reel myself back in. And as far as Aries rising, I do think that's kind of how I got so far in the like radio entertainment industry space, just because I can show up and really be this like pow, punchy type of person, even though on the inside, I kind of feel like, um, you know, like uh, introverted, I guess. Yes. So I kind of have to like put on that Aries, like, yeah, I'm here. Let's do it. Uh, veil. But it, it is still very much a part of 
who I am. And I would love to like lean more into that. Absolutely. Big go-getter energy, which we love. (laughs) Yeah. Always doing something. Yeah. Cannot sit still. Which is really interesting because I would love if you could share your human design type with the audience. Oh my gosh. Yes. My human design type is reflector and I'm still new into human design astrology. I feel like I have for the most part, but human design is a bit of a conundrum. What I understand about reflector and maybe you know more is that it's somebody who is highly attuned to their environment because we have all open energy centers. So we're easily influenced in a way that's like we can sample everything, like everybody's energy and, um, you know, what's around us. But that can be kind of draining, especially if it's not an environment that serves us. So like if I'm around people who are so inspired and lit up and palm trees and sunshine, I'm like, yes. But if it's like more heavy energy, people are you know, like upset or angry or frustrated or an environment that's just not conducive to what feels good, then I can not only internalize that, but I reflect it and almost like become it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really, I've I've learned it about myself only in hindsight that I really can become the people and the places I surround myself with or am in. And it can be absolutely life-changing for the better or worse. And I find that so fascinating because I know that you've lived in a lot of big cities, a lot of different types of environments all over the United States. I know you've done a lot of traveling. So would you say that that being in different locations really influences you and kind of the way that you move through the world? 100,000%. I grew up in the Midwest, So I sort of have like a a flavor for the Midwest anyway. Minneapolis was one of my favorite places to live because it was halfway with like, you've got the metropolitan area and it's very nice and clean, but then you also have like a lot of the lakes and outdoors and activities. Oh, excuse me. I'm coming up on a cold. So Mm. thank God this is virtual, but anyway, and then I've lived in really dense, um, cities like Philly, obviously that's where we met. That was very energetically tough for me. The East Coast mentality anyway, like between Philly and New York and like everybody on the East Coast. I just, that's not, uh, it doesn't feel good in my energy center. I'm just going to start saying it like Mm -hmm. that from now on. Um, And that was a tough place for me to adapt and and really just thrive. Like I, I felt very stifled in an environment like that. So yeah. it really does affect me immensely. And I guess I never thought about it like that. Like I've moved a lot. And so, yeah, I've been a lot of different iterations of myself because of that. Mm-hmm. And I find that so fascinating because I always like to ask my guests, where are you from? Where do you, you know, where do you live in the world? Because our location really, you know, plays a lot into our energy and how we show up. And I know for me, I have what I kind of consider to be a very strong energetic constitution. So here on the East Coast in Philadelphia, I actually kind of thrive in locations that are a little bit more energetically dense because I don't know how to describe it. It's just sort of like, I feel like I can really sort of shine and stand out in a place that, um, I don't know, it's just sort of different in in its intensity. Um, So yeah, but... I would love for us to get into a little bit about your personal story and some of the main points in your life that have led you to where you are now. Anything that you feel called to share and to getting into this version of Raven? Yeah, well, you know, I kind of want to double back on what you said, because I do think it Mm -hmm. actually is really an important integral part of my story that I never considered. But everybody is going to thrive differently in different environments. And I think that's such a wonderful thing. Thank God. Like we're not all called to be in Miami, Florida, or like we're not all called to be in Minneapolis or just wherever. Right. Because um, one, it would be hella congested and there'd be a lot of traffic, but two, I just think like, I know like LA, for example, gets this like, Oh, or New York city, you know, people are like, I need to be there. I need to be there to like have a big life or make things happen for me. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case because it might not be conducive to you as a person and how you operate. Mm -hmm. And while Philly is, you know, in radio terms, top 10 market, like a really 
great place to be for entertainment, especially if you want to come up to New York. Um, my Mars line, if you're familiar with astrocartography, I know you are, Emily, but mm -hmm. the listener, my Mars line was going straight through Philly, which Mars ah. um, ruled by the ancient god of war uh, or named after. And it was just a very tough, lots of conflict um, that I experienced in Philly because of that line. So I think it's all interconnected. And if I could kind of like go back and tell myself, um, you know, just give myself some advice, I would say it is much less about the markets and size and more about which markets are going to be most conducive to your ability to thrive. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is I always saw myself in California, but the way that I, the industry I was in, in, in radio, you kind of have to like work your way up. So you start in really small markets. I was in Canton, Ohio, which was like market 136, Fort Wayne, market 113, until I made the jump to Minneapolis, which was a medium-sized market. And you you move up and you move up and you move up like a ladder. Um, but I kind of wish I would have known or just told myself back then when I was 20 and had a lot more energy. Hey, Raven, if you're feeling called to the palm trees and the ease of just being by the ocean and more sunshine, go there and a job will follow. Like you mm -hmm. don't have to stick to this industry or whatever in the hopes of um, go where you're go where you feel called and go where you thrive. So I think that is one of the biggest takeaways in my career. And if I could just tell anybody who's like there, <laughs> listen to me, <laughs> I've done it all. I've learned a lot of lessons. Um, but what, I'm sorry, what was your, did that answer your question or? It did. But I also mm -hmm. want to touch on another point that you just made, which I love is that we all think so much from our mental body, from the head that in order to move up the corporate ladder or to to get to where we want to go or reach the goal, we have to kind of follow the strategic placement of moving to this specific city because it's going to be a good thing for this job or whatever it is versus you energetically internally, you may thrive best in an environment that's totally different than where you're quote unquote supposed to go for the job or for the thing. And I really love speaking to that so much with what I do, because typically when we think of spiritual influencers or entrepreneurs, a lot of them are on the West Coast. A lot of them are where you are, or they're in places, you know, they're in Bali, they're in uh, places that are supposed to be more conducive to your energy. But I find it so interesting that some of us, myself included, we can thrive in other places where, as light workers, we need to be doing our own work energetically to help shift the vibration, shift the frequency of the city that we're in. So for me right now, that's Philly. Maybe that's going to change at some point. But for the listener, that could be for you. And I have clients in Arkansas. I have clients in Iowa. I have clients in Alaska. I have clients all over the country. And so... I just wanted to say that wherever you feel drawn to go, follow that. Don't follow what someone else is telling you to do or telling you where to go just because of a strategic reason for it. A million percent. And also, I'm going to double down on what you said. Just forget the strategy. Like, I always thought I had to like take these chess move types steps to get to the ultimate goal. And it's not that I didn't, I did achieve a morning show, <laughs> the goal, which was always part of my career. However, sometimes I just wish I would have done what I actually wanted to do instead of trying to like take the smaller steps to get to the thing I wanted to do. There's, there's more of a, sh a direct route, which is just doing the thing you want to do. So for example, my goal was always to be on a morning show and I spent a lot of time in positions that weren't on a morning show because I hoped that strategically it would lead me to one when I could have just probably applied to some morning shows and gotten a job on a morning show. And going back to the whole L.A. thing, I've wanted to live here since high school, but I was like, oh, no, I have to strategically I have to move up the market and the ladder. And no, I could have just moved here. So sometimes we delay our own process by getting in our own way, by thinking that there's 
that I, well, it's got to be this like complicated route and I can't just have the thing that I want. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, you actually can. You actually can. So once you get rid of that limiting belief that there's some strategy and it's got to be hard and you have to like, oh, like squeeze and fit and move things around. No, no, just move to the city or take the job you want or whatever. And I promise you by doing that and being in like alignment with that, things will open up for you. And as someone who just manifested a big move to LA, what are some tips or advice that you would give to the listener for making such a big change? Because I know that must have taken a lot of energy, a lot of thought, a lot of intention to move across the country like you did. Yeah. You know, so I feel like my opinion might be a little bit different just because I've done it so much. Mm. What's interesting is that you would think it gets easier, but it actually gets a lot harder. So I guess my point is when you are going to make a move like this, say there is somebody somewhere you really want to move to, one, make sure it's aligned with you. Make sure that is in full integrity. It's not out of ego or it's not for some other thing or like... There's a million reasons people make moves and I know it's because they get jobs or like they're in a relationship and that person's moving and that's all fine to consider. But really ask yourself, like, Mm -hmm. is this a yes for me and my body? Is this like without those things as a factor, does this feel good for me? And if it's a yes, then I would say what's going to happen is going to surprise you. You are going to start to romanticize where you're at right now. And you're really not going to want to leave. This is something that might surprise you, Emily. You know how much I was having a tough time in Philly. But when it came time to actually pack up my things and go, of course, I was excited like about the next step. But I had to mourn, Mm -hmm. you know, that period in my life, which was so pivotal. I had you know, that was really where I had like a rock bottom moment. I re-evaluated much of my life. I built incredible friendships, you, Eden, Zoe, like that was such a, I know that was such a crucial time in my life. And I was especially mourning the apartment that I lived in, that, um, the condo area. And I'll tell you why, because that, those walls, those four walls saw me go through the worst times in my life. It saw my relationship end. It saw like so many career highs, failures, so many tears. And so I guess what I'm saying is what's going to happen is you're going to start to romanticize it all. You're going to start grieving it. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, am I making the right decision? You're going to want to stay. Like I remember when I was ultimately, when I, when I left my job in Philly, there was a period where I was still there. And I just remember like walking around the city and just be like, oh my gosh, like noticing things I'd never noticed before, being more mindful, being like, maybe this wasn't as terrible as I thought. Like it kind of makes you have this perspective of presence that you didn't before because you were striving for whatever the thing was and you were constantly in the future. But now that you're brought back to the present, you're like, whoa, I had a whole life here and friends and like I grew and I learned and I, this, so that's going to happen. I just want to, I feel like people, and then you're going to start questioning, like, is this the right decision? (laughs) But it is, it's the right decision because, you know, chapters in a book, they end and you move on to the next one. And so as far as like actually moving the process, that sucks. (laughs) I mean, I just mean like moving sucks. Everybody knows that, especially across the country. It's really expensive if you don't have a company paying for it. Um, But, you know, getting into a city that's new, I have found the best things to do is eliminate travel. So once you're here, don't don't go for a trip if you if you can like be here as much as possible to establish roots, get to know your little neighborhood. Where's your grocery store? Where's your Pilates studio? Where are your things that can make you feel like you have some sense of roots? And then you can start kind of building a community from there. It's always going to be hard, but it's so worth it. It's always worth it. I've never, even in Philly, I I keep referencing Philly because Emily just knows what a tough experience that was for me. I would not trade it. Mm -hmm. I I'm so happy to have had that experience and to have lived there. I wouldn't, I would not trade it. I can honestly say that. 
Yeah. I mean, what profound advice. And I think it's so important to touch on what you said about having to grieve and mourn that past, that last version of you before you're able to move into the new thing. Because I see it time and time again with so many of my clients who have finally made the big leap that they've wanted to make, whether it's leaving the job or getting out of the relationship or moving or whatever it is. And they think that getting to that new destination, it's going to change everything. And oh my God, I'm going to be happy. (laughs) And oh my God, it's going to be easy. And life is going to work out because I finally made the leap. But There's still a little bit of your energy in the past, and there's still part of you that we need to say goodbye to, and we need to mourn them and uh, kind of come to terms with, okay, I need to let go of that energy and really intentionally move myself into this new future version, knowing that it's not necessarily going to be easy every single day. There's going to be a transition and heck, a lot of us struggle with transitions. So really being conscious and intentional with yourself and knowing that I need to let go of the past. And when I'm ready, I can fully step into this new life that I'm creating. Absolutely. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Like you said, I mean, not only are you in the grieving mourning process of that last chapter or experience or whatever, but it's not like I landed in LA, like the Miley Cyrus song and was just like, oh my God, I have arrived. No, (laughs) like things, the, the, the same old shit, like, because it's the same old me at this, at the end of the day, like your environment ultimately doesn't change um, your circumstances. You have to change your circumstances from within. Like everything is a yeah. reflection of what you're projecting on the inside out. And so I just say that to say that I, you know, still had um, some fears, some anxieties to work through. Some of my own struggles were like, uh, it is expensive to live here. And I know people told me that, but really actually coming into it and understanding, like, not only is like, I think you think like, oh, it's expensive rent. And no, it's not just rent. It's going out. It's toilet paper. It's like everything at the grocery store. It's every- yeah. everything is just more expensive. Gas, I don't even, you get it. You get it. So that was an adjustment. Making friends is the adjustment. And there were periods where I felt, you know, lonely. There was periods I felt homesick. I mean, before I moved outright to L.A., I made a pit stop at my family's house in Ohio. And I just remember being like, oh, I just wish I was at home. I just wish I was in Ohio. Like, I just wish because you're also kind of like yearning for your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Um, You're yearning for familiarity especially if you don't have friends yet or a community yet. Um, and even though I was just so excited to be here when I first moved here, it was still, it's still new. It's still daunting. It's still new experiences. It's still like, I don't know my neighborhood yet. Is it safe around here? Like, what are the go-to spots? Like, it's disorienting. Anytime you are plucked from your comfort zone and <laughs> did you ever play Roller Coaster Tycoon? Mm-hmm. Yes. Where yeah. you could pick up <laughs> You can pick up members of the park and yes. put them, plop them in another. Yeah. And they're just kind of like, I mean, they're they're like not real players, but they're probably like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, where, yeah. I thought I was going to go get an yeah. ice cream cone and now I'm over here. So anyway, I just say that to say it's a little bit disorienting. You have to get your grounding, your bearings again, and it's not going to be all happily ever after. There's You're still going to have whatever it is you were dealing with, unless it's, again, dealt with internally and fully Mm -hmm. worked through, then it's just going to be something you'll have to continue to work through. Oh my gosh. And I can say that for myself with quitting my corporate job and going full-time in my business, I had a big transition where I sort of had this idea in my mind, like, oh my God, I'm making the leap. And all of a sudden the universe is going to bring me the clients and the opportunities and it's just going to (laughs) happen. And we we have this idea that things, the floodgates are just going to open because we've made the leap and we've jumped off the cliff and things are just going to happen. And I remember I would, because at the time I didn't have a ton of clients yet, So I had a lot of open time on my calendar. So I would just go to a local park and I would sit and I would just reflect and I would think to myself, gosh, 
I, you know, how are there, there are people out there who have a wait list for clients. And I was in such a kind of a little bit of a victim energy of, you know, I made the leap mm. and why isn't the universe kind of bringing me what I'm asking for and my, you know, manifesting these clients. And now reflecting on that, I'm like, oh my gosh, the universe always brings you exactly what you need, not necessarily what you want. And your transition may not be the easiest, but I know at that time when I was sort of in that waiting phase, that transitional phase that I had just moved in full time into my business phase, that the universe was giving me more space, more opportunity to really just sit with myself and reflect. And of course, as we know, do the internal work (laughs) to recognize Mm -hmm. that I wasn't fully ready for all of the clients that I had been hoping to take at that time. So sometimes when we do navigate such a big transition, we really need to allow ourselves to grieve, to mourn, to sit with ourselves before perhaps the floodgates do open for those opportunities that we're looking for. Because they'll come. The opportunities will come. Things will start to fall into place. It just may not happen as quickly as our human ego would like it to happen. Just can we take a moment because no truer words have been spoken. And that is something that I think even I struggled with when I first moved here. Um, you you really do think, and it's probably out of ego, where you're like, okay, I took the leap. Like, I'm just going to be fully caught and I'm going to get all the money and abundance and like everything that I was promised, right? Like, it's almost this little level of entitlement. Mm -hmm. and oh my god that was not the case in fact so I do VO so I was in radio I left the industry moved to LA and I do voiceover full-time and this was probably the toughest time in my business I had just make it made the leap to Los Angeles and I don't know what it was I don't even think it matters like my logical mind is like, well, the strikes happened, um, the acting strikes happened and the writer strikes and just Q4, you're in quarter four. So businesses just don't have as much money spent, but I was not booking nearly as much work as I had before I had moved out here. Oh my God, my world completely unraveled. And I kind of wish I could go back, don't we all? and give ourselves a little pep talk, I think I was really spinning my wheels, you know, and also yeah. internalizing oh, yeah. like, what did I do wrong? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, Cause you're like, I've, I did everything right. Like I, I did everything right. And I made the leap and like, where are you? Like God universe, like catch me, like what the heck? And I really think like, I feel kind of embarrassed to admit that I, that's how I felt, but I'm sure a lot of people do. It's like, chill bro <laughs> like, what are you in a rush for I got you and it's not your it's not Raven's timing it's divine timing and maybe you're not ready maybe I I always think too I know it's a little bit of a tangent but I always think like well I'm sitting here and I'm ready and I've done my part but does that mean like the people who are gonna give you the opportunity have done their part? Does that mean your clients are ready to seek out your services? Does that mean like everything is in place? There's so much we don't know or see. And so all we can really do is what we can do and then have the faith and the hope that in divine timing, you will get exactly what you need when you need it. And you always do. Like if you think back, you always do. So Oh my gosh. And whenever anyone asks me the question, what advice would you give you to would you give to your younger self? I always say, I would tell that version of myself to relax, <laughs> to chill <laughs> out. <laughs> because things always work out. They always yeah. do. Somehow things start to shift, things start to come in, things start to happen, and then you look back with time and you realize, okay, I could have taken a deep breath. I could Mm -hmm. have just sort of let myself be okay with being where you are in the present moment, even if life around you doesn't look exactly the way that you want it to yet. Yeah, exactly. Keyword. And it's not all action oriented, by the way. Sorry, I'm going to see if I can get my camera to stop being blurry. Okay. (laughs) It's not all action oriented. 
Meaning, I think when things aren't working or moving, we think we have to do something like, oh, then there's must be something that I need to do or I'm not doing enough or whatever. And that could not be the case. In fact, I would encourage you to just stop. Just stop because you get in this like clawing at anything energy that is erratic. I'm speaking to myself. It's erratic and it gets you absolutely nowhere. And in fact, I would go as far to say as it repels anything that's trying to come your way because you are not in the energy to receive it. And I kid you not, when I was, I had taken like a week off. I was so tired of trying. Like I was at that point where I was doing everything and nothing was really working, quote unquote. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take this week off and I'm just going to big chill. I'm just going to do whatever I want, whenever I want. I'm not even going to like do day-to-day chores and like be on this rigid schedule. I'm just going to like relax, journal, go for some walks, maybe order some like DoorDash. Like to the point, I know that sounds like I know people order DoorDash, but I was being very rigid. Like I was like, no, only grocery store, like whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, kid you not, I get a text and it's like, hey, so I'm going to be moving into this house. And I was wondering if anybody wants to take over my lease. I'll tell you why this is relevant, because I have been in this apartment that I'm in in Los Angeles since I moved here in September. It has been a nightmare. I'm sure, Mm -hmm. Emily, you've seen my stories. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. It's been very frustrating. And I knew that I would need to find a new place to live. But I did not have it in me to do those steps that are like, you know, apartments.com, Zillow, Trulio, like reaching out, going on a million tours. Like I was just energetically exhausted. And I was also spinning my wheels about, you know, auditions and getting work and all this stuff. And so the literally the day I decide, the week I decide to not do anything, I just get a random text from a friend in a, in this friend group that I'm part of that says they're moving out. Oh my, does anybody want this lease? It's this amount of money, which is exactly the exact amount that I wanted to pay for. It was actually less than. It's in the ex, like exact neighborhood that I would want to live in. Like everything wow. was perfectly aligned, taken care of. I All I had to do was, was be like open to it, essentially. Be mm-hmm. like, hmm. Let me let me look into this. Okay, yeah, this is a great fit. I'm down. And it was so amazing and wonderful. And I did nothing. I did nothing. I did nothing. And so that's what I'm saying is when it feels like you're you're doing everything and nothing's working, stop <laughs> and so do nothing. <laughs> I freaking love that advice. It is so true. <laughs> I know for myself and everyone in my audience. I have an audience who is just such high workers, high achievers, so success oriented, myself included, that we think the answer to getting what we want is to do more and to work harder. And for myself, I know when I'm in that energy, it actually puts me into a bit of a resistant energy because I don't have space or capacity for more. And I'm Mm -hmm. thinking to myself, oh my gosh, in order to achieve this goal or get what I want, I have to you know, email a million people. I have to go apply for all these different things. I have to do all these different, take all these different actions, but, and then I get frustrated when I'm not getting the result. And then I'm even more frustrated and just, you can see it kind of gets you in this tight energy of constriction. Yes. But as soon as I get, I book a trip or I take a long weekend (laughs) or I take a few days off or I reschedule my my clients, all of a sudden I get the email that I've been waiting for or Mm -hmm. the answer to the message that I've been wanting comes through or the thing that I've been, you know, waiting to happen, all of a sudden it shows up. It's so interesting. It, so you said something that is very affirming to me. You said the word constrict. It genuinely feels like that in your body, in your bones. You just, I remember thinking like, God, I'm so wound up. I'm so tight. Like, of course, nothing can get to me. It's like I've got a brick wall in my aura. I'm not going to be able to receive anything. And it's really not until you actually like deeply relax. And it usually takes a vacation or it usually takes like a three-day trip or just like, I don't know, reading some smutty novel Uh, on the couch one afternoon. I don't know what it is that 
is going to make you, the listener, relax. But I highly recommend leaning into that because that's usually when things, that's usually when you're in receiver mode. And I also want to just reiterate the working hard and trying hard and it's hard. Mm -hmm. You're just emphasizing, you're reiterating this constant hard, 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 hard. And so everything you're getting is hard, 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 hard. And that means anything you receive is going to be hard, 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 hard. Like let's, let's get rid of that. I love my dad so much, but he did, you know, program into me hard work, reaps rewards and results. And yes, it does. If that's what you think, whether you think you can or can't, you are right. And if you think that hard work is what gets you results, then you will be working hard Mm -hmm. to get any result. But if you reprogram that and say, when I'm happy, when I'm joyful, when I'm at ease, I receive an overflow of abundance and obviously really believe it. You can't just say these things and like be like, okay, where is it? Um, Then that's going to be your truth. So I just, it's all about your belief system. It's all about your energy. I mean, it's so funny because energy is invisible (laughs) you know like we can't see it but we know it's a thing because it's it's the reason that I texted you and you were like oh my god I was just about to text you or it's the reason that you know you aren't understanding why you know some people are having some type of reaction to you when you're putting out this like desperate vibe it's like I just really want them to text me back and they're not texting you back it's like They don't know it, but all on this subconscious level, it's all energy and we're all picking up on it. And so if we're aware of the energy we're putting out, I think it can really change our lives. And what's really crazy is Raven just made this amazing point. And for those of you who are watching the video, her camera, which was slightly blurry, all of a sudden just went crystal clear. (laughs) It was like the people need to see this one. (laughs) Yes. Extra (laughs) emphasis on that point. Oh my gosh. So... And that's such a huge shift. Everything you're talking about is a huge shift that I've been working on making in my life personally. And it starts internally, right? It's an energetic shift from how can I move from this place of I am constantly working so hard all the time. And that's how I've manifested things in my life up until this point to how can I be more open to Mm -hmm. receive and in a place of flow where I can sort of pull my energy back a little bit from all the action that I'm taking and actually create more space for more goodness, more abundance to flow to me, to come to me? How can I create more of that magnetism? And again, it's an internal shift because if you are so caught up in and programmed to believe that you have to do more to create more because of, like you said, your parents, your conditioning, your upbringing, you know, being an achievement oriented person, going to a, you know, good university, all these different things, you will so innately believe that that's a part of your identity, but you have Mm -hmm. to make an identity shift into, okay, actually I'm a type of person who I can do more with less. I can receive more with less. hundred percent. And it's tough. Like I'm in the same boat. I am trying really hard to, especially it's, it's, it's nice when you have some evidence, right? When it's like, Mm -hmm. oh, like this apartment manifested so effortlessly for me. So that helps try to go back in your brain and think about all the times things were easy. So that'll help. But also Mm -hmm. I want to say that when you are trying to make any type of identity shift, It can be tough because the people who know us are also written to that identity that we've Mm -hmm. told them who we are, or maybe like it's our parents, so they've told us who we are, right? And so I just encourage anybody who is exploring other identities, like, you know, the identity of ease instead of things have to be hard and I'm working endless hours to keep that close to your chest for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because I do think like some, some, when you are changing your beliefs, I know it starts on the inside, but the outside can have a big impact when you're in those new, like those early stages. Yeah. I, it's, it, it almost is like you're going back to when you are a small child and everything's impressionable that's how it feels when you're trying to rewire your limiting beliefs. Everything is impressionable. So if anybody is like 
coming at you with like, no, you have to work hard, but you're trying to reprogram and be like, no, it's easy. You're going to be like, oh no, it, they're right. Like, so just, you know, yes. give yourself grace, but also try not to tell too many people. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Yet. It's so true. And also when you when you start to get more comfortable with it yourself, your external world will start to reflect that back to you. Because mm-hmm. for example, for me with work with really intentionally doing some work around this for myself. And for me, that means being a business owner. That means pulling my energy back a little bit and asking for help from other people. Guess what? I had opportunities show up with Raven who offered to help me out with something, which was amazing. I had other people offer to help me out with different things. My partner's helping me out with a whole variety of new things. It takes a lot off my plate. So it's really interesting that when we start to do some of the energetic work, yes, little ways will start to show up that mm-hmm. are going to start help proving your your new identity and that evidence like you were speaking to does start to happen, does start to come through. And then what you have to do is say yes to those opportunities. And then that starts to create safety. You start to kind of get, you feel more safe with putting yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone, a little bit more each time, which is so totally. interesting. And then the universe will start to offer you bigger you opportunities. More. Yes. And how many times does the universe send us something, but we're in no energy? You, do, you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Where it's yeah. like, oh, this is actually like, could be perfect. And I should see this through, but we're like, mm, no. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, you wonder why you don't get any more opportunities. So I think you really hit the nail on the head there with like, you got to say yes, and then keep saying yes, and you get more comfortable with it. And then it just becomes your identity, you know, down the line. Oh my gosh, 100%. Absolutely. So on that note, I would love to know a little bit more of, about what you, Raven, are working on right now in your life and business. What big things do you have going on? We would love for the audience to hear that. Yeah. You know, this is a time in my life that's much different than others. And I couldn't be more thankful because I think up until this point, there was always some overarching goal, some big dream to achieve, something I had my sights set on and was laser focused, tunnel vision, got to get this and was not thinking about life or anybody else for that matter. And now that I'm in this place, I kind of feel like I can see everything because I am very grounded in where I'm at. And now it just seems like I have endless possibilities and opportunities. And I'm open to doing and trying everything and kind of seeing what feels good. This goes back to me as a reflector. Mm -hmm. It's really good for me to go out and sample things and see what I like. And I know that this might be different for other people. But as a reflector, if you're a reflector watching, I think that when we To others, it might seem like, what is she doing? Like she was doing this and now she's not. And then she's doing this and now she's not. But this is how it works. This is how you find what really lights you up. So I had a little bit of shadow about it. I'm not going to lie. As somebody who was always very much like, this is what I want. And like, that was it. Now trying other things is like, what are people thinking of me? Do they think that like, I don't have any idea what I'm doing? And I kind of don't have any idea what I'm doing, but like, that's kind of the point. It's to figure out what I'm doing. And so I say all that to say that I'm doing voiceover. I really love it. I'm trying to branch off and do coaching, like get a coach. I'm trying to get a coach to do more voice acting. Mm -hmm. So obviously I'm in LA, so this is like the place to do it. But I'm at this point where I've been doing a lot of commercial work, which kind of stems back from me in radio. So I know commercial and I know how to do corporate stuff. So if I really want to do like animation or video games, I kind of need some acting chops. So I am really scared, but like I'm reaching out to coaches and seeing, you know, what their rates are and kind of going out of my comfort zone in that way, doing like mixers and networking. I think networking is also amazing if you're a reflector. I mean, for anybody, but just like getting out there, meeting as many people as possible and seeing what they do, see if you have an interest in it or, or if they could help you and what you're doing. And then I've got my podcast, um, Astro Candy. It's in its fourth season. I literally can't believe it. 
we're going on a summer hiatus. Um, this, I don't know if this is a reflector thing or if this is just a me thing, but I'm like, I have to have periods of energetic recalibration or like just recharging my batteries. So I think this season, it started in January and it's going to run until the end of this month, May. And we're going to just take like the summer off, but I just need that period to like, you know, recalibrate, rest, and then like go and find other people to interview and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that's really all that's really happening. And I, I've just been, you know, I actually, <laughs> this is so funny. This is, this is what I'm talking about with like being open to opportunities. So Emily, I reach out to you to ask about something in particular about editing your podcast. Like I was like, oh, who's your editor? I'm kind of looking at an editor editor myself. Emily like gives me the info and I kind of do my own research and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could be really good at this. Like I edit my own podcast and don't think twice about it. I've done it. I've done radio for forever. And I was like, I could be really good at this. And next thing I know, like I'm building out packages. I'm like posting on Upwork. I'm reaching out to people and I'm applying to like editor and producer roles for podcast networks. So like you just kind of never know. You just have to like see and sample and like what feels mm -hmm. good and go with it. So I'm in that very exploratory phase at the moment and just kind of seeing what works for me and what doesn't. I love that so much because I am a 1-3 profile in human design, a manifesting generator. And Amazing. what does that mean? It means that I am here to experiment and try new things to find what works and what doesn't, and then to teach you and tell everybody else what has worked for me and what I like, and so that other people can learn from it. So I love that way of living. It is... <laughs> I will just say that it takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery to sample things, to try new things on, because there are going to be some things that don't work, that, yeah. <laughs> that oh, yeah. don't go well, that are a total <laughs> flop. And <laughs> trust me, as a business owner, there have been many things and it's all good and you have to own it. And it's okay if things don't work out, you just move on to the next thing. You make your peace with it and you see what next new thing kind of is lighting you up and is pulling your attention. So yeah, I love that advice because I think when you are in it and you're a business owner or whatever it is you're doing, you think it's like the end all be all. If this one thing doesn't work, like it's over, I'm a failure. But if I learn anything in the last year that I've been freelancing and working for myself, it's that every failure is actually a success because you're one step closer to getting to the thing that's, that's the right fit. And I stopped internalizing the the quote unquote failures because if I did I would be mm -hmm. packed up and back home in Ohio trust me like yeah. I would have quit a long time ago <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I and I think a big part of that too because for me a lot of my per, you know quote unquote perceived failure comes from maybe things not happening in the time frame that I've wanted them to happen a lot of it comes down to timing and deadlines perceived deadlines that we put on ourselves that we create for ourselves yeah. And recognizing that, I love what you said earlier about I'm on the universe's timeline. It's not about Raven's timeline. And just kind of knowing that there are so many things happening behind the scenes that we don't know, that we're not conscious of, so many other things that are lining up that even if whatever is going on in your life right now, it isn't working out or isn't going to work out, to have faith because there's something else that's better that's going to work out in a different way. And it may not be on the timeline that you want, but that's okay. Yes. It may not be on your timeline. It may not be how we, I get so focused on the how, because I think we have this perceived, we think we have to figure it out because if there's something you want, you're like, okay, well, how do I get there? Step A, step B, step C. No. In fact, I if I would have taken the step A, step B, step C route from my apartment that just came through as a manifestation, I would be on Zillow, on apartments.com, doing tours, all of the things. But no, it actually ended up being somebody who like just reached out and friends of friends. And I would have never 
thought of that way. In fact, yeah. not only would I have never thought that's how it would come through, I would have never even been able to have a part in that. So mm -hmm. like you have to realize how much is really out of your hands and you can only do what you can do. Totally. And to see that there are so many more possibilities out there than what you can consciously think of. Yes. Like <laughs> that's another thing too. Cause if you think about it, we have like the smallest portion of the big picture and the big picture, it's this masterpiece. So if we are thinking like, oh, it's going to be this one thing and you're focused on that, you're missing the magic because it could be so much bigger and grander and more marvelous and it most likely will be, but you're just like over here just ruminating about like, oh, but it's got to be this thing. I just can't. <laughs> I've done it. I'm like, this is me to me. <laughs> I've done this so many times. So I'm trying to help you out. Not you, Emily, but <laughs> the listener. Oh. <laughs> me too. Me too. It's good <laughs> advice for me as well. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. I would also love to know, this is a question I've been loving to ask my guests, which is what is bringing you a lot of joy in your life right now? Oh my God. I love this question. What a fabulous question. Outdoor walks. That's it. Yes. Like this most simple thing ever outside in nature, something about fresh air exercise. And it doesn't have to be like anything grueling, just like a little pep in your step walk. Like I love, there's nothing that gets me into a higher state of consciousness and just like this feeling of oneness with the universe than being outside among the trees in the fresh air. And just, I don't know, there's something just so like magnetic about it that it makes me feel like I can do anything. Hell yeah. I love that. I know for me at this time of the year, I try to start implementing sunset walks because the sunsets here in Philly are so pretty during the summertime. So just started doing that. Love it. Can't wait to do more of them. I love that answer. I miss my Schuylkill River walks. I will say uh, I that was no. one thing I had to mourn when I left. I was like, man, but the Schuylkill River is like, I mean, you know, it can be kind of grody, but the actual essence of walking and the people and they got picnics and they're reading and it's just, oh, I mm -hmm. love it. Mm -hmm. love yes. That. And also too, what does being a mystic mean to you? Being a mystic. So it actually kind of goes back to what I said about this oneness, the sense of oneness with something greater, something bigger, the, the divine, the universe, God, and like an interconnectedness. Like, I think it's all just coursing through our body and our veins and we're part of everything. I love that. That's such a beautiful answer. Thank and you. how can the listener tap into that more? What are some tips that you would give them for living a more mystical life? I would say it's being open to the things that you can't see. Oh, yes. Yeah, like really being open. And also to tap into that, I would just go back to what we were saying. Any type of nature, grounding, fresh air, um, sand, grass, like I don't know what it is, but just really like – I don't know if this is a thought I had while I was high or if this was a thought I had while I was on one of these magnificent walks. But if you just like look around at the birds and the blades of grass and the leaves swaying in the breeze, like I look and I'm like, the earth is alive. Like mm -hmm. everything is alive. I'm alive. The birds are alive. The trees are alive. Like the grass is alive. These ants are alive. Like everything is just. And so that's where I just get like the most this feeling of like, I'm part of something that's bigger than me. And I think we need that. I think we need that perspective. Sometimes we think it's just like us in our own little world and we have to make everything happen. But it, once you realize we are everything, it all just kind of like, I don't know. It just feels so much better and easier. And we're all at, we're after easy these days. Absolutely. <laughs> to feel supported. I mean, yeah. what a joy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> ease and joy everybody ease and joy there's one thing you can take away from this episode it's what can you do in your life to help bring some more ease and a sense of just more relaxation yeah and flow mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I would agree. It, it's making me like, I know what I, I know what I'm going to do after this. I'm going to go on a walk. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably just going to like scrap my day and read a book or something or color. <laughs> I don't know, but I just feel like I need more of that, like <sighs> relaxing, relaxing, peaceful, restful energy. Totally. And with that in mind, what are some ways that someone listening can find you, work with you? What do you have going on right now? Yeah. So Instagram at Raven Brinson. So first and last name. And then my podcast is at Astro Candy Podcast. Um, you can also listen to that. It's anywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify. I have an episode with Emily. We talked about entities. Oh my God. This episode that we did gave me the heebie-jeebies, but like in a good way. Like she tells you about entities, kind of demystifies them and how to clear out negative energy and entities from your space, which I have been saging, by the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's it's good stuff. So that's where you can connect. Amazing. And is there anything else that you feel called to share today that we didn't talk about yet? You know, no, because I really think that we covered it, but I'm going to say that this was such a wonderful conversation and I just appreciate you for holding the space and just offering like a conducive environment for people to listen and be open. And like, I just felt very comfortable sharing everything. So I appreciate you. And I think it takes a lot as somebody who's the host and the interviewer to curate a space like that. And I think it's wonderful. Oh, well, thank you for the feedback. I feel so grateful and appreciative for you with being vulnerable with us today and sharing your story. So thank you for coming on the show. Anytime. Thanks, Emily.